the final chapter is about endangered ecosystem. So in this chapter, it's more of an application how human like us are causing problem to the ecosystem. Uh, we're going to see something called the greenhouse, greenhouse effect, thinning of uh, ozone layer. Uh, we're going to see example of air acid rains and how we have to need to manage our development, a proper management of certain activities that we are doing. Uh, this is the, uh, the real process of how I said uh, eutrophication is taking place. Okay, uh, let's look at this. So eutrophication is basically, we have the artificial enrichment from the fertilizer, uh, basically cause excessive growth of the algae on top of this uh, lake. So example, we have all the waste producing by the agriculture uh, will go through as a waste and will allow the algae to boom, to grow. Because of this, the algae grow on top of the water surface, oxygen, all the sunlight will not be able to go through. Oxygen uh, will not able to reach the lake. Photosynthesis will not happen. And some algae, some aquatic the animal inside the water will die. And we do have bacteria inside, basically decompose all the living, uh, the dead material. And all the aerobic bacteria that use oxygen will not have oxygen, so they also die. So they will have high uh, biological oxygen demand. The demand of oxygen is high at that situation but we are not able to solve anything and finally all the fish uh, be it small or large fish finally die because of the uh, not proper using of agriculture runs containing the fertilizer so we have to be very careful of the fertilizer usage and how the material from the agriculture are being actually uh, disposed into the lake uh, next is we're going to talk about the uh, acid rain so acid rain can happen because of a lot of factors here. The source can be either combustion from fossil fuel. Uh, we have all the, uh, the fuel that we are putting into the, uh, the, the, the vehicles from the companies, from the uh, power station. And we also have a lot of uh, gases that are being produced. The, the, problem, the problematic gases is obviously the sulfuric dioxide and also the nitrogen gases, be it uh, nitrogen oxide or nitrogen dioxide. So these gases are going to actually uh, combine with the water vapor uh, during the rain and they're basically going to form either a sulfuric acid or a nitric acid. In this case, these two are acidic situation. And when they fall on the earth's surface, basically going to cause a lot of problem uh, in the sense of person can uh, actually receive this uh, acidic water supply. And we can also see some of the uh, buildings, some of the monuments, like we have Tugunagara in our place in KL. Like uh, we can see a lot of ero erosion, like all of the corrosive material actually can break down all these sculptures of this uh, material. So these are example of how acidic condition can corrode due to acid rain. So, and so these are the effect a more detailed way. In case of agriculture, uh, we can see the soil become acidic. Acidic soil is not useful anymore for any crops. We can see all the acid cause the mineral like potassium, calcium are not available for growth. And remember the plant's leaf will start to become not good enough. They become yellowish. They're going to fall off. Finally, the tissue are not supportive enough. Roots are inside the soil. Since the soils are not good enough because of the acids, they can't absorb nutrient and finally the plants also die. So overall algae culture will be totally spoiled. So please be careful on the acid rains. Uh, in case of all the, uh, all the animals stays inside the water, we have all the uh, aluminum ions that coming from the lakes and rivers can kill by uh, acids. All the phytoplankton uh, inside the aquatic uh, ecosystem gonna die because uh, there are certain animals who eat fire phytoplankton, the aquatic animal, and totally affecting the food chains. Uh, in case of human health or animal health, we can say that these acids are all the heavy metals. We have the cadmium, we have lead, mercury, and contaminate most of the drinking water. And also, these metals also can affect the growing children, be it in the uh, pregnancy, uh, because they can actually affect the uh, brain function. Uh, the example I told you, we have the, all the buildings, all the monuments, which is uh, uh, important for the country. Basically, going to be erode, going to be corrosive, and finally, there are no more there. So be careful with acid rains. Uh, 
Uh, another application is on the ozone layer. We know that ozone uh, being depleted slowly and we can feel the heat most of the time during the daytime. So actually what's the thing causing the ozone layer? Uh, we let's gonna see it in detail. Uh, we have the UV rays coming from the sunlight, okay? And during this time, we have something called the CFC, uh, chlorofluorocarbon. Uh, they are being released through the aircon through the use of refrigerators. So nowadays, we have uh, reduced CFC refrigerators and also aircon being actually improved. Uh, so during this time, the CFC that present in the environment, uh, the UV is going to just basically strike this molecule. And during this time, we also have the chlorine that being released, going to actually combine with the ozone molecule. O3 is the ozone molecule. And because of this collision, they're going to break all the oxygen to be released out. Okay. And during this process, some will be combined uh, into forming some chloride monox uh, monoxide, and some will release as oxygen. Okay, and because of this process, uh, continues, continues, and they're going to produce a lot of this uh, compound that gonna steal all the oxygen. And that's gonna be a depletion of the ozone layer. Because of this continuous process of ozone layer is not being actually replenished, there's gonna be something called the uh, greenhouse effect. So overall, this diagram is more uh, easy to understand about what happened of ozone layer. So we know that sunlight will produce all the uh, solar energy coming from here. And most of the time, it will be reflected back. And reflected back, we have the ozone layer actually to do the trapping, uh, to actually absorb it. And in this situation, uh, some of it will be actually uh, uh, radiated back to, this, to, the, to, the, uh, to the earth. And we have a lot of these greenhouse gases like carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, which is going to trap all these heat. So we have a lot of this burning fuel producing these gases, continuous producing of the fuels, uh, gases from the vehicle, from the factories going to trap all the heat and more heat being trapped at the earth level going to cause this global warming. And continuous of global warming is not good for any living organism in this earth. So let's see uh, if the different effect what's going to take place. Uh, first, we're going to see how the ozone uh, affecting the health and uh, going to see what happened in the agriculture. In sense of health, a uh, lot of UV rays is not good because it's basically penetrating into your skin, uh, causing a skin cancer, cataracts affecting your eyes and sunburns. Also, uh, lately you can have uh, maybe higher degree of sunburns. And UV rays basically going to affect also your, your gene, your DNA and your chromosomes and basically affect your immune system function. Uh, in case of global warming, we can see a lot of pests going to be there uh, because all the uh, warmer pests going to actually start to um, stay inside the warmer area. Okay, we're going to have a lot of spread of vector uh, carrying organisms like dengue can caused by virus and malaria also caused by parasites and these are carried by the mosquitoes. So mosquito like certain situation of certain warm temperature. Uh, in certain uh, aspect of agriculture, obviously we know that soils are not good enough because there's no nutrients. Chlorophyll in the plants are being damaged. No photosynthesis. Crop is always going to be reduced. So this affects the agriculture uh, consumers and also the producers. Uh, in case of global warming, we can see more land become less water because of too much of heat. And also this affects the uh, crop production. Uh, continue with the ecosystem um, because our ozone layer is depleted, it's gonna kill microorganisms and phytoplankton, important for food chain. Animal will have no food, the chain will be stopped there. Uh, in case of ecosystem of the global warming, we have the North Pole and South Pole uh, containing the icebergs, the ice caps, where the polar bears are living. Because that situation is not gonna be good enough, the polar bear can't live anymore there and then basically going to extinct uh, slowly. So the changes going to be, weather going to take place in certain region, going to be extreme uh, temperature changes. Certain, uh, certain places going to be too much of cold changes. The weather pattern cannot be predicted uh, because certain uh, animals are no more there. In certain of climate change, uh, temperature going to increase. Uh, melting going to take place. We're going to see that uh, different sea level going to be rise up. Wind going to be changed. Finally, uh, we have a lot of problem with the agriculture and rainforest. Uh, rainfall affects this problem. And finally, temperature is high in this case. So let's recap about this chapter. We saw how problem is this activity of human. Like we do a lot of uh, 
deforestation, uh, we cut trees, we release, uh, we use a lot of fuels for burning and that cause pollution, be it water, uh, noise pollution, air pollution uh, coming from industries, from vehicle. So some of the problems with this uh, ecosystem, we can see the soil become erode, uh, erode, flash flood can happen and landslide, a lot of uh, people, a lot of damages can take place. Eutrophication on the surface of the uh, plant can be seen. So it's important that we take some step, uh, be it an uh, individual person, be it uh, 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 rules and regulation. We need, can be use biological control. We don't depend on fertilizer, but we use some biological control. Like uh, we have another animal control, the population, another one. Laws need to be implemented, need to be regulated. We can use technology that is more renewable sources, more environmental friendly, like reduce plastic bags, use biodegradable uh, bags and so on, bring your own bag. Uh, we have some preservation center, conservation center in case of like pandas are uh, extinct. We have certain uh, 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 delicate place for them to survive and so on. And we must give uh, education and awareness to all people about management of uh, waste, management of resources, how to live within a limited so that we do not have any wastage. Before we end, we see some of the example of question. Uh, in this, we have the osprey, okay, and it's going to eat the uh, fish that present in the river. How the pesticides present in the river going to affect? A uh, similar question is always talking about agriculture run runoff, which contain the fertilizer, and will make sure that the, the soil will not have the nutrients and eventually it will flow into the river and the river become polluted. Uh, we have a pesticide called the DDT, which affect the uh, offspring in case the offspring will not able to breed. So pesticides will accumulate in the fish and when the fish have this, this offspring is going to eat. So in this situation, DDT that present the fish will be transferred to the offspring. Try to imagine if like human are eating this fish, we are basically going to take the DDT, which is the pesticides. So basically, it's going to affect the overall uh, offspring breeding capability. Same goes to human. Uh, if pesticide is too much in the water, the fish is going to actually also take the water and human is going to eat the fish. Uh, the accumulation of the pesticides is always there. Uh, suggest how we can prevent these. We can actually capture the offspring and breed them in an enclosed area where the uh, fish that provided is not uh, going to affect these offspring. Uh, there are also some countries already, uh, this is banned, uh, ban the use of DDT by farmers. They have other alternatives of pesticide because DDT is very uh, hazardous for health uh, for our living creatures. So these are the example of how we can see uh, an ecosystem. We have water flowing from position X to position Y and this discharge is happening here. We have the, uh, the farm, we have all the uh, chicken, goats and all the cow. State the difference between the water collected at X and collected at Y. Obviously, you can see that water coming here have a lot of nutrients and a lot of oxygen because water are being discharged here. So oxygen availability is very less and we do have the farm here. So obviously, all the waste, all the excretion going to come into this area. Uh, explain the differences. Uh, at the position X, you can see the oxygen is higher compared to here. And the bacteria present at Y seems to be more higher because this area, the oxygen is less, the bacteria can survive. And also all the feces produced by the uh, farm animals are going to be there. Bacteria are going to break down all this uh, material into a, something called slurry. Uh, at the same time, this oxygen are being used by the bacteria. So overall, the oxygen is going to get less because bacteria are using it to break down the uh, waste product of this animal. So oxygen high here, oxygen low here. Uh, this is about the uh, question on the uh, how different uh, uh, Lincolns on the three bugs are present in some buildings. So some scientists have discovered that Lincolns are sensitive to sulfur dioxide. So the graph showing that uh, the distance closer are lesser of uh, Lincolns growing, but at far they are more higher. Suggest so another source which emits sulfur dioxide. Beside power plant, we also have larger industrial boilers. You can give the example. You can also give example of vehicles. Can, what can be concluded from this? Basically, the fewer uh, Lincolns are growing here when they are more nearer to the power station. Why? Uh, because Lincolns are basically uh, some kind of algae uh, and so make a fungi. Sulfur dioxide will basically destroy the cells because they are living cells. 
they dissolve the water and they form the sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is the part of the acid rain. Acid is not good enough for the lincolns to grow and finally they die. And then uh, algae is basically a uh, part of where there's chlorophyll. Because of that, they also gonna die. So lincolns gonna die, algae gonna die. Name the another uh, gas similar to sulfur. Dioxide, obviously oxide nitrogen can be nitrogen oxide or nitrogen dioxide.